Today we're going to be talking about the black wall, rogue AIs in Cyberpunk 2077, and AI in general. As always, I never forget questions from you tunes, and one of the recent questions I got from you guys was if AIs deserve rights. I'll be answering that question too. In addition to all of this, we'll also compare modern AI to the AIs we see in Cyberpunk 2077. With all of that out of the way, make sure to get comfortable, grab yourself something to eat or drink, and let's dive right in. Enter the Black Wall, the big bad digital wall that's supposed to save all of us. Netwatch, the Net's self-appointed guardians, claim they built it from the ground up. Picture this epic saga. Netwatch teams up with Alt Cunningham, the netrunning legend turned AI ghost, plus some transcendental AIs, elite hackers, and maybe a few digital spirits. Together, they craft the Black Wall, a fortress locking rogue AIs away and keeping nosy netrunners from passing through. This has always sounded too good to be true for me, and even CD Projekt Red hints at this story being a little bit fishy. Checking their own lore about the game, we find this description about the Black Wall. The Black Wall came without warning, out of nowhere, stranding Netrunners on the other side with no safe exit or way to survive in cyberspace. Netwatch killed two birds with one stone, neutralizing rogue AIs and troublesome hackers. The cost? Abandoning the tech breakthroughs tied to self-aware AIs. Does that sound like Netwatch inventing it? Or does it sound more like something they stumbled across and just claimed to have invented? Netwatch is all about control. They found this insanely powerful thing, saw it could lock down AI's Netrunners, and went, good enough, we'll keep it, it's ours now. No manual, no backstory, just a name and a logo slapped on it. In the game, the official story has begun falling apart. We first had Sandra Dorset and her hacker friends. They stumbled upon Netwatch's data secrets. This caused a panic from Netwatch. Netwatch sent out multiple teams to look for and stop these hackers. We find evidence of this in Jackson Plains. On one of the Netwatch laptops, we find the following message. Report 325-77 NUSA Intelligence. Residual traces recovered and secured from the net point to the possible collaboration of NUS Intelligence with Sandra D, who is accused of hacking a database containing clearances of Netwatch archives. Recommended course of action, continue investigation to confirm NUSA Intelligence's collaboration with an illegal operation targeting the independence and integrity of Netwatch. This message in itself doesn't exactly mention the black wall. It simply says that Netwatch archives were the target. The second piece of the puzzle can be found in Phantom Liberty. Here we can read a secret analysis synthesized by the NUS intelligence about the black wall. It says in no uncertain terms that Netwatch's involvement in the creation of the black wall was over exaggerated. If anyone's to blame, it's Myers, not you. You might be right, but so am I. Right, our objective, to free show me from under Hans's duress. Unfortunately, this ain't a normal rescue op, because, well, she's been infected with something from beyond the Black Wall, a consequence of her service to the NUS and President Mines. I'm not about to pretend I understand the tech whys and how. The important thing is, if she doesn't get treatment, Killer. The cure is an AI that lives on a neural matrix. Hansen possesses said matrix now. We aim to seize it. My theory on this has been consistent. I believe that Netwatch didn't build the Black Wall per se, but found it. Maybe it's ancient AI tech, maybe a forgotten project, but they're riding it blind. That has worked out well for them so far, but when it fails, it's going to cause a flood that no one can contain. The world of cyberpunk has some insanely advanced AIs, but what about our world? For this, believe it or not, I'm just the guy to talk to. So back in the days when you talked about AI, we used to talk about machine learning. But this all changed with the release of ChatGPT. Today, if someone mentions AI, they probably mean LLMs, large language models. I'll try to not go too deep into LLMs, but an LLM is a type of AI that's been trained on a massive amount of text data like billions of words from books, articles, and websites. This training helps it understand and generate human-like text. 
It's basically a super advanced autocomplete of some kind. You give it a prompt and it predicts what the next tokens should be. Models like GPT-3 or GPT-4 are examples of this. They can spit out biased or wrong information since they're just mimicking what they've seen, not actually understanding anything. Despite all this, they're changing the game in a lot of fields, including my field, software engineering. In all honesty, there's a lot of things that modern LLMs cannot do. A few months ago, the concept of agentic AI was introduced. This is basically a type of artificial intelligence that can act independently, making decisions and performing tasks without needing constant human input. For this, you can imagine a self-driving car navigating roads or a robot managing tasks in a warehouse. It's a significant step forward in AI development because it allows machines to take on complex responsibilities autonomously. This hasn't been successfully implemented as of yet, at least not in my opinion. I don't, for example, see a marketplace for AI agents happening anytime soon. The main problem here is that for the LLM-based AI agents, hallucination is still a problem. Who would really trust an AI to correctly do tasks over and over and over again on their own and use, let's say, your credit card? Would you trust an AI to do that? What if it spends all your money? What if it gets you into debt? What if it acts illegally on a website? Are you, as the individual, liable? So many important questions are left unanswered here. So for now, agentic AI can't be trusted fully and it's very expensive to run. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying it will never work perfectly. I'm just saying it doesn't work perfectly right now. If you're interested in trying out the bleeding edge of agentic AI, then there's something I can recommend for you. It hasn't been released yet, but it's called Manus or Manus from China. Once released, it's going to dominate all Western agentic AIs. Most likely, it's going to be another deep seek moment. Another discussion happening within the community is how we achieve AGI. Artificial general intelligence is smarter than humans in all areas. Think Delamain and not ChatGPT. Currently, two approaches exist. One approach is the one being taken by OpenAI, which is basically to increase the amount of computation both during training and during inference. The idea is that models will perform better and better with this approach and eventually, become true AGI. This approach is obviously not working. Even companies like Microsoft, who were once bullish about OpenAI, just three months ago basically, have now completely changed their tune. There's also a French AI legend called Jean Lecun, or Yann Lecun, like they say in the US, who has also expressed criticism about this approach of achieving AGI just adding more GPUs won't solve the fundamental issues that LLMs today have. Yan's beef with LLMs come from the following four points, and I have to say, I agree with him for once. His first point is the absence of a world model. LLMs do not possess deep understanding of the physical world. Humans develop intuition and reasoning through sensory experiences and interactions with the environment, but LLMs rely solely on data text data. This limits the ability to form a world model, an internal representation of how the world works, which is critical for common sense reasoning and planning. And this speaks for itself. As a kid, you remember your parents telling you not to touch the fire, and then you eventually touched the fire and got burned, and now you know that fire burns. Instinctively, you just know that. An LLM doesn't feel pain, it can't touch fire. So for an LLM to know that fire burns instinctively, it's very difficult. The next point is uh, next word predictions versus true reasoning. The core mechanism of LLMs is predicting the next word or the next token, if you're being correct, in a sequence based on patterns in their training data. Lacan views this as a superficial hack rather than genuine intelligence. While it enables coherent text generation, it falls short of enabling logical deduction, hierarchical planning, and adaptability to novel scenarios, skills humans acquire naturally. The third point is the lack of persistent learning. Unlike humans and animals, who continuously learn and adapt through experiences, LLMs are static after training. They cannot update their knowledge in real time or learn new skills without extensive retraining, making them less flexible 
and efficient compared to biological intelligence. The final point that Jan makes is struggles with basic reasoning. He highlights that LLMs often fail at tasks requiring basic reasoning or understanding of cause and effect, such as those involving physical interactions, challenges even young children can navigate. Finally, you may be asking yourselves, is there any company out there that's not just creating another ChatGPT copy? Is there something out there that's trying to achieve super intelligence in a different way? The answer is yes. The company is called Safe Super Intelligence and it's founded by Ilya Sutskeva. Ilya is an interesting guy. He was recruited by Elon Musk to go and co-found OpenAI with the goal to make the best AI in the world in a safe way that's useful to all human beings. This is very ironic given the path that OpenAI currently takes. As I mentioned before, Ilya is creating SSI, Safe Super Intelligence, and ironically, SSI is the name of the security company in Cyberpunk 2077 that was inside the Perales penthouse, enabling their mind control. Going back to Cyberpunk 2077, the Black Wall is not the only powerful AI in the universe. We also have these things called regional AIs, transcendental sentient entities tied to specific regions. Reports of these things are so rare, even Spider Murphy has serious doubts about them. She's convinced they are either Raish Batmos's delusions or one of his sick jokes. But Raish, he swears that all of these are 100% real. First, we have Europa, the Euro Theater AI. This AI is a brainiac in some sense, that's how it's described, and it runs on the best hardware on the net. Raish says it went dark a few years ago, and no one knows what it's been up to ever since. Next, we have Akira, the Tokyo Chiba AI. Raish calls it nice, which is hilarious given its chaotic region. Think of a hermit obsessively tidying their shack. If you come across Akira, one minute it's going to be helping you, and the next it's going to be breaking your gear. Rusty is the Rust Belt AI. This one's a little bit weird, super abstract. It didn't have an official name until Raish Batmos gave it the name Rusty. No feelings, no goals, just hoards info for the fun of it. Sometimes it stalks Netrunners, tweaking their world to see what happens. Then we have O1. This one's a nervous wreck. As far as AIs go, if it flags something as dangerous, it just deletes that thing. It's fixated on objects, programs, AIs, seeing them as threats. If you are a Netrunner though, it's most likely going to talk to you, even befriend you if it sees you as being intelligent. Packer the Pacifica AI. This one's deep, loves the illogical, mulls over reality itself and Raish says he scored VR code from it once. But getting its attention is quite tough. It ignores logical moves, so you've got to act crazy to ping its radar. Duchess is the Soviet AI, the Sovspace AI. Substandard hardware keeps it simple, and Raish calls it gullible, almost like a small kid. Next, we have Zero, the Africana AI. Worst gear than most, smart, sentient, but delusional and erratic. Finally, we have Orbitsville. Raish says there's no AI here, just aliens running the show. And no, he wasn't joking when he said aliens. We've covered a lot of topics today, Tunes. The Black Wall's a living enigma with unknown powers. Raish's rabbits unleashed hell, and now regional AIs like Europa, Akira, and the rest are lurking in the shadows. On top of all of this, we've also looked at the latest AI developments happening in our world today. It's obvious to me that AGI won't arrive anytime soon for us. I work with software every day, and honestly, even the best coding LLMs make crazy mistakes once it's introduced to a significantly large codebase. In my opinion, it's going to take some time before we have something like Delamain or Rogue AIs or CN-07. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't use AI today though. I think everyone should play around with AI products out there, if nothing else, just to see what they can do for you. One really important question that one of you tunes asked me is if AIs deserve rights. Personally, 
This question can't be answered without taking into account what comes with rights. You and me, humans, in our respective countries, we have rights by law, but we also have responsibilities as members of our society. When you go to work every day, you pay taxes. When there is a war happening, like there's a war happening in Ukraine and Russia, you need to participate in the war effort. These things are all responsibilities. Every citizen has them and that's why they have rights. I also don't know if this is exactly true, but I feel like the more rights you have, the more responsibilities you have and the better your life is. The opposite is also true. So, you can imagine someone living in a country illegally, they have few rights compared to a legal citizen, and also few responsibilities like they won't get drafted if there's a war happening because the army just doesn't know that they exist in the first place. But also, if they want to, they wouldn't need to pay any taxes because they're not expected to pay taxes because the government doesn't know that they're working in the country. But at the end of the day, their quality of life is worse than that of a legal citizen. The same concept can be applied to AIs and other digital sentient beings. So think of something like Delamain. If it has all the responsibilities of a human citizen, so it pays taxes on the money it makes, it contributes to society in a positive way, and it abides by the laws of the country, then it should have rights, yes. However, if we're talking about something crazy like a rogue AI that just wants to kill human beings, doesn't abide by the law of the land, and doesn't contribute to society in any meaningful way, I don't think it should have rights. I had a lot of fun making this one. Hope you enjoyed it as well. Stay safe in the net tombs and I'll catch you in the next one.